<clears throat> All right, guys, we're on Deuteronomy 25. Deuteronomy 25. If there be a controversy between men and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. And it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to his fault by a certain number. Forty stripes he may give him and not exceed, lest if he should exceed and beat him above these with many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. <laughs> if brethren dwell together and none of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to be a wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. It's kind of an iffy one right there, right? But let me go back. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. That's super random for this, this um, what's been spoken so far. But anyway, so they're saying that if if uh, if the if brothers live together, one of them die, have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry like to a stranger. She should she, like you know her husband's dead; she has no kids with them. She, she should just stick within the family, and end up being with the brother. <laughs> and it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. And if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say my husband's brother refuseth to raise up unto his brother and a name in israel he will not perform the duty of my husband's brother then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him and if he stand to it and say i like not to take her then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say so shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house and his name shall be called in Israel, the house of him that hath his shoe loosed. <laughs> That's kind of funny, don't you think? So she takes his shoe off him and spits in his face. That's hilarious. So I guess it's like a big deal because it's really to keep, uh, to not build up his brother's house. So even if, if your husband died, you had no kids. But you live, the brother was there. You're supposed to be with the brother. And then once you have a kid with him, you name that kid after the brother who died to keep his name alive. So when men strive together one with another and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him and putteth forth her hand and taketh him by the secrets, then thou shalt cut off her hand. Thy eye shall not pity her. Your eye shall not pity her. Thou shalt not have in thy bag diverse weights a great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thy house diverse measures, a great and a small, but thou shalt have a perfect and just weight. A perfect and just measure shalt thou have. Uh, that might be some sort of analogy for you no know, partiality, unfairness. You know, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. For all that do such things and all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way. When you were come forth out of Egypt, how we met thee by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou wast faint and weary, and he feared not God. So Amalek, he smote the hindmost of thee, even the fucking tired people in the back. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thy enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek. From under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. That thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. <laughs> so you're blotting it out, you're not going to remember, or you're going to remember. I don't know. <laughs> I guess don't, like, don't forget what God did for you, really. I don't know.